Welcome to Secure Hacks Weekly, yet another episode, but this time about the insecure data storage. So first of all, we're going to learn what is insecure data storage, how can be exploited, and what are the risks and consequences of insecure data storage. Well, simply, when we look into the definition of the insecure data storage, this is uh, simply referring to uh, different data that is stored without the added protection or encryption or um, any other different security means uh, in terms of, um, for example, an application that is developed by different development teams. And uh, in general, when the team produces an application, uh, sometimes they might not be aware or they might assume that there are files that will not be um, either sensitive or in general accessed by the hacker, but then later it appears that they are actually accessible and this is what we're going to be uh, talking about. So let's dig in. First of all, we have over here a web application that on its main page, um, there's only a login form. It might appear that all of the website functionality um, is only available after logging in, but of course this doesn't stop the attacker from looking around and just trying to find something that developers may have overlooked. And one of the first activities that the attacker could consider while performing the effective uh, reconnaissance uh, on particular website uh, is uh, just simply brute forcing the directories. And this can be done by using numerous tools. Uh, for example, you can use the Deer Buster or Go Buster or simply Barb Suit and uh, many others. But in this demo, we will actually use uh, Deer Search. So let's perform the directory brute force on our website. And for that, we're using the Deer Search minus U localhost. Um, and so on, and we are here using the uh, dictionary uh, as well in order to search for uh, vulnerable um, entries. And uh, let's just simply run it for a minute. And uh, we've got um, actually here the searching process, so it always take ta takes time, so we need to be patient. Uh, but um, already we can see that uh, we've got a few hints. So uh, we've got, for example, robots.txt, and uh, robots.txt is always interesting because it is a file that tells search engine crawlers which URLs uh, can and which cannot be accessed on our site by the crawler. So we can always check it out because that can always reveal us some additional content that's possibly sensitive. So if we get into robots.txt, and here we go, you can see that we've got a certain uh, disallowances. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, that's just not much here because it's a sample website, but um, it may actually include something something interesting. Yeah, so uh, that that entry, of course, uh, disallowing URLs, but it's just simply a, a 404 page. Uh, so um, it's, it's not really something for us that can be useful uh, for us. But um, when we, when we, um, don't want to give up so early. We can of course check the other URLs and um, other URLs like robot.txt, uh, gtmp file, db file, and in general the files starting starting with uh, tilde and so on. So that's something that is interesting. We can we can uh, check um, the email file. So for example, that could be some some reference to the temporary file, or uh, here we've got some potentially passwords. Of course, it might be just uh, something that's there, but nothing nothing interesting. And if we do uh, analyze the ctb file extension you can see that this is actually a document created by the cherry tree and note-taking application, which is quite an unusual extension in general. So we can check what is inside. Yes, yeah, sometimes we might be able to open that file, sometimes not. Yeah, but for the purpose of the demo, we are able to uh, actually open this file because we have set up all the software that is necessary for that particular extension. Yeah. And over here, uh, there might be something, yes? Yeah? So there is, uh, in general, some entry. Um, and uh, we've got a send on an email about a policy. So unfortunately, nothing really uh, juicy here. Uh, but we can try searching, yes? Yeah? So the more information we are able to find, uh, the better. And even though that information directly will not be um, hurting someone, uh, then that might be actually useful for the further research. So we've got as well some uh, SQL file, yes? Yeah? So that can include some SQL query 
and uh, that might reveal information about uh, the database. So we can also verify that. Uh, it's also a very popular extension and file type in general to look for because, uh, again, it might just reveal more information about the infrastructure. So um, that could be could be also an option. And uh, we can uh, here, um, of course, copy all the files over here that we are gathering and uh, we can uh, also try to review that particular SQL file. Yeah, so we can check what is inside and here you are able to see that we've got some uh, query queries um, and uh, here uh, we've got, uh, for example, a version of um of certain software potentially and uh, again name of the databases and uh, anything that potentially could be useful this is just an example of course but um but we we should definitely go deeper here yeah so this is usually how this operation looks like. And there is also a quite an innocent DS store file. And as you may know, a DS store is actually a file that is created by the OS X uh, to save uh, folder properties. And it actually may contain sensitive information. So that is exactly what we're going to do over here. And uh, for that, we will be able to see what is what is um, within the within the store. Yeah. So right now we are uh, technically dropping that one into the online parser, and let's just answer a couple of couple of questions here. And uh, within the online DS store parser, uh, we can uh, drop that particular file, and then yet we will be able to see. Uh, what's what's uh, out there more? So for that moment, we are just dropping the file. So let's do it. So that's the DS uh, store and um, upload and parse. And this is uh, information that we are getting from the inside of the file. Yeah. So in general, uh, that's that's all a real world uh, case study. Yeah, you can see that there are some references to also some files. So instead of probing the website, we might actually try to query this particular files directly from the website, though we were not able to do it right now. But because we already know the names, then we are able to actually um, put the name literally uh, into into the url and then we manage to hit the file so we can download the file and then review more information about what the particular website uh, is about yeah so here we go we've got another uh, excel spreadsheet that is uh, also quite useful over here uh, to see and um we can get more information about what that is and you can see that maybe there is some kind of a username and password or maybe some financial data or maybe something else that could be yet another tip to perform the further exploitation. But it's it's a very straightforward operation. What our goal was uh, for this episode was to show you simply the meaning and uh, the power of their search and uh, how important it is not only to scan your website for this kind of additional files that's not supposed to be there, but in general, if you're performing uh, pen tests, then this is yet another useful tool to put into your toolkit uh, to be able to search just for something that you guys could use for the further steps of the penetration tests. So hopefully you enjoy it. A pretty straightforward uh, comment about uh, insecure data storage. Thank you so much for listening to our Secure Hacks Weekly episode.